Oh, I've got it. Yeah? Yeah. Like brown yeah. bread, crust, caramel. Yeah, crust. Today we're brewing the Wizard's Quaff. It's described as a small beer or a low quality, locally brewed drink. Except let's be real, a wizard isn't gonna be drinking a low quality drink, are they? Especially when they've got access to all of their fine rare bits of magic. Very rare piece of magic. Something that you might expect to be served at a local tavern or inn. That I can definitely, definitely imagine. So we're gonna be brewing up an alt beer. Alt beer is a type of beer originating from Dusseldorf, which is on par with quality with cold although you don't really want to be telling any inhabitants of either city that since they've got a really long established rivalry. Altbeer was brewed in the Rhineland and is a darkish pale ale that is similar to Kolsch in that it's also conditioned and brewed at a low temperature for an ale, especially compared to its British cousins which are much warmer fermented. And it was called an Altbeer to distinguish it from the newer beers originating in Bavaria that were the pale lagers. Altbeer was effectively just the way to say it's the old method, i.e. the ale method and the result is a wonderful concoction with the dryness and crispiness of a lager but with some of those fruity elements that you would expect to find in an ale. An out beer, similar again to Kolsch, although just that slightly bit different just to differentiate, is also served in Stanger looking glasses. Small cylindrical glasses serving a fairly small volume, around 200 to 300 milliliters. Although these ones are shorter and fatter. Same, locally brewed, could be a small beer if you wanted to make it such. Sold freely in a tavern, this is definitely in my opinion sounds like a wizard's quaff. So let's get right into this recipe. We're gonna want a nice big pilsner base and I love pilsner so fight me and it gives a wonderful sort of bready quality as opposed to more toasted bread quality which I think works in the alt beer. So I'll use something like 92.7% of it as my base mold. Now to this we want to add a little bit of sort of sweet malty caramelness with just a touch more sweetness. And so I'll add a little bit of Caramunic 3 just for, to bring some of those flavors out. So we'll go with about 4.1% of Caramunic 3. Now to help the color a little bit, as an out beer is a little bit more copper colored, we're gonna be adding out 1.6% of Carafa Special 2 just to drive the color up a little. Bit. We're also gonna be adding 1.6% of Melanoidic Mold. And this can somewhat simulate a decoction mash, which I really don't want to be doing, and also helps drive up the maltiness just that little bit more. For hops, we wanna go with some nice spicy, floral, noble-esque hops. So I'm gonna play around with maybe like 13 IBUs of Perla hops at 60 minutes into the boil, and then another about 12 IBUs of Halatau Mittelblu, also around 60 minutes into the boil. Then for the aroma and flavor, we'll go with about 10 IBUs of Tetnang at 20 minutes into the boil, just for some of that noble hop character. As for yeast, well, it's just gonna be, have to be the one, the only, Dusseldorf Alt Yeast, WLP036, traditional Alt Yeast, and I'm gonna make a starter of this about a day before brewing. I just use these proper starter kits as they're really nice and easy to get started. They contain all the DME you need, pop a can in, fill it up with water, rinse it, put, pop it back in, and there you go, you've basically made your starter, nice and easy. With that, let's get ready to rumble and get on with this brew day. Oh, did I forget to mention? We're gonna be doing a traditional sort of German snap mash. So the first mash is gonna be at about 52 degrees for a protein rest. And we're gonna hold this for about 15 minutes. Then after the 15 minutes are up, we're gonna step this up to about 62 degrees for our beta amylase rest. And that should help provide all the fermentable sugars that we need to ferment this beer. Then after 35 minutes, we're gonna step this up once more to 70 degrees. And at 70 degrees, we're gonna hold it once more for another 35 minutes. And this is gonna be for the alpha amylase rest. Produce some of those dextrins and long chain sugars. And what these do is they don't ferment as readily. So we get a little bit of body left in our beer. And one more thing. One more thing. We're then gonna step up once again to about 76 degrees for about 15 minutes just to mash out. And what that's gonna do is denature any enzymes to effectively cement this mash profile and to stop any more sugars from being fermented, long chain or short chain. So let's go in with our first 52 degrees protein rest and toss in our grain. I'm gonna be using 5.7 kilograms of Pilsner malt, 250 grams of Caramunic 3, 100 grams of Carafa Special 2, and 100 grams of Melanoidin malt. I'm gonna stir this in well as I'm making a 21 litre batch and get rid of any dough balls. Recirculate this well after around five minutes just to ensure even dispersal. After 15 minutes, we're gonna raise the temperature to 62 degrees. Generally, I start my timer once the temperature reaches around 58 degrees-ish, 
as that's within that beta analyze enzyme temperature. And I'm gonna hold this temperature at 62 degrees for about 35 minutes. And I'm also gonna keep recirculating throughout the entire time because, well, why not? 35 minutes later, we're gonna raise the temperature yet again to 70 degrees. And again, we're gonna keep recirculating for another 35 minutes. Finally, we're gonna step the temperature up to 76 degrees for a last 15 minutes to mash out. Once the mash out is over, and I've remembered to switch off my recirculation pump, we're gonna raise the grain basket and sparge with unfortunately just standard groundwater temperature water to get to our pre-boil volume. Once we've sparged, now I've definitely squeezed all the grain out, I'm gonna dispose of the grain and wait for the boil. Boil ready, in goes our first hop additions of 22 grams of perler hops and 20 grams of Hallertau middle blue hops at 60 minutes into the boil. At 20 minutes left of the boil, I'm gonna add my 30 grams of Tetnang hops. Five minutes later, at 50 minutes left of the boil, I'm gonna add in my immersion chiller to sanitize this in the boiling wort. Finally, we can start cooling down to our fermentation temperature of 18 degrees. I like to turn on the pump while I do this as it helps keep the wort flowing around the immersion chiller and speeds this up. Once we're at temperature, it's time to transfer to our fermenter and pitch our yeast of WLP036 Dusseldorf out. Then we're gonna keep this in the garage at about 18 degrees Celsius and I'm gonna ferment this under pressure at 15 PSI. This to make, helps make up for the temperature difference without needing to get the temperature any lower. It's a neat trick for lagers too. Now for kegging, I want this to be completely oxygen free. So what I've done is I've connected my carbonated firmzilla to the CO2, filled this keg with star sand and emptied it out using CO2. So all that's left in here should hopefully be just pure CO2. I've stuck on a spunding valve to ensure that a little bit of carbonation remains the same because this was brewed under pressure and we don't want it to just completely foam up. What I'm gonna do last is just connect these two outposts to the out and out and then turn on the CO2 to start the transfer. Today, we've got the Wizard's Quad or the Alt Beer, which I am personally really excited about as it's one of my favourite beer styles. Looks wise, standard brown beer, right? Yeah. Brown beer could be clearer, but I'm not that finicky about all oh, the clarity must be on point. This is good enough for me, to be honest with you. It's like a nice dark brown as well. It's not like a very light yeah, brown. Yeah, it's like um, a Coca Cola ice lolly. Yeah, yeah. Smell wise, should we go for a little smell? Go on then. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that smells pretty damn good. I'm curious, what are you getting? Uh, personally, I'm getting um, brown bread. Like it's turning into crust. Oh, I got it. Yeah? Yeah. Like brown yeah. bread, crust, caramel. Yeah, crust. Crust is a nice. good word of you. Right? Saw. Yeah. Crust Delicious. Is, crust is the white. Oh my god. Crust is what I would say it is. <laughs> yes. Cheers. <laughs> damn, son. That is nice. That's a proper out beer taste. Like it's not full on to Murige or however you would say it. But I'm a fan. Very bready. It's bready, like it's very bready. You're right. There's a bit of like sweet caramel notes, but it's not overly sweet. Caramel. Mmm, I'm getting a little bit of caramel, but like a touch. But mainly it's bread. It's like brown bread crust. I'm not getting caramel. Fair enough. I'm just getting bread. And there's a little bit of like something funky going on, like maybe floral, maybe like a little bit of hop, not strong, but just a little undertaste in that bitterness of some sort of uh, noble hop, which is quite pleasant. Yeah, I'm getting a florally vibe. It, it's light. It's a light tasting beer. For 5.9%, that is a very light tasting beer, which again, I'm How really pleased with 5.9. What the? So that is really nice. Summertime, round a pool, that would be the perfect beer, I reckon. Yeah, if you want something that's a bit, um, you know. <laughs> All I know is like, you want a stout, you want a beer, but you don't want it too strong you don't want it too light. No, I smell the ground. It's a bingo. <laughs> that, that's a bingo. Oh, that's it. Ooh, that's a bingo. As always, if you like this video, please do leave a like and subscribe. Cheers. Bye. Nice